hello, hello, and good morning, friends. It is Allison. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be such a fun and exciting day because we are going to thoroughly go through my coffee bar. So in my Valentine's Day decorating video, my coffee bar, specifically my syrups, got quite a bit of love, got quite a bit of love in that comment section. So I wanted to give my coffee bar and my syrups and all of the surrounding pieces just a little bit more of extra attention today so we can go through it together. So if you guys are interested in getting some in inspiration for your own coffee bar or just seeing what I like to do, then please enjoy the rest of the video. And then in the end, we can go ahead and make a coffee together because I think that would just be really fun because if you guys can tell, it is rainy, rainy, rainy today. And I think it was snowing a little bit earlier, but luckily we're just here with rain, no snow on the ground. But in the meantime, we can enjoy a nice hot drink together. So let's go ahead and get started on what is on my coffee bar. All right, you guys, welcome to my coffee bar area. I'm really pleased with how this guy has turned out over the years. So I'm really looking forward to sharing all of the little accessories that I have collected throughout the year. First, I want to start with these syrup bottles. I purchased them off of Amazon. They are so beautiful and elegant but I do caution you, they don't work that well. <laughs> I'll show you guys in a couple of seconds, but I don't know if it's the viscosity of the syrup, but they only allow like one or two drops. So if you're looking for a slower drip rate, then this might be the bottle for you, but I just take the top off when I pour it out. But I'll link down below where I got these guys from. They are from Amazon, so pretty, pretty accessible. So the next thing I want to share with you guys is my salt and pepper shakers. These guys were from Cracker Barrel, very silly, but these are a great way to kind of put out something with, a, with whatever season that we are going through. I put cinnamon and cinnamon sugar in these guys and I coordinate my salt and pepper shakers with whatever season we are entering into. So in the fall I have pumpkin ones and for Christmas I have these really cute um, what are they gingerbread house salt and pepper shakers from pottery barn that are just absolutely beautiful I put these teaspoons on display as well I purchased them from Marshall's and I think they look really nice and the next thing that I want to go over is kind of the tray that everything is sitting on this guy is from Marshall's and but but they are everywhere. They're in Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls with different sizes, different shapes, different heights, and different shades of wood. So I really like how this guy just adds an extra elevation to my bar cart and really brings the eye um, with an extra dimension. So also next to this tray is this little carton of sprinkles. It has a cork lid and a spoon i purchased it from world market for under three dollars and i just put some sprinkles in here i decided to put sprinkles instead of syrup because the cork lid is not as airtight as i would want it to be but that's why in the back here with this airtight container filled with some straws i purchased this guy from michael's and during the holidays i usually put some homemade syrup in there but for now i don't have any homemade syrup so i just displayed some fun straws that i found from target so what is next i definitely cannot forget about the beautiful artwork that i have presented um, on my wall i purchased this guy from etsy i absolutely love the seller and all of her work i have about maybe four or five pieces just around my house um, in my bathroom and in my guest room I love her work and I will definitely link her shop below because I just love all of the things that she does I actually purchased this to put on my wall but I purchased it at a little bit uh, smaller of a size than I wanted to but this is this side of the bar cart so we'll go ahead now and actually talk about the machine but yeah I will link everything down below so if you guys would like to purchase any of these things then you will be able to do so all right so now let's go ahead and talk about my actual machine this is the Breville Barista Pro um, by the brand Breville and I do want to put out that you do not need to go out and buy an expensive machine just to have for your bar cart before this guy I had a Keurig that worked just 
fine. But because I was a COVID travel ICU nurse, I thought I would just get myself a little treat with the extra money that I made while I was traveling. And I went ahead and I bought this um, espresso machine. Very happy with this purchase. If you guys are on the fence about buying it, I definitely recommend it. But a few accessories I bought for this guy is this bottomless portafilter. And I really like it. It's from the brand, brand Crema. And I like that it's bottomless so I can tell which point of extraction that I am in during my espresso making process. I also like to have a festive cup always on hand. This one's from World Market. I really like it. I purchased it for Valentine's Day. I really love the handle. And this tool is very cool because it's used to kind of sift and shift around the espresso or the coffee beans after they are ground up and in your portafilter to really um, break up any of those clumps and really distribute it nicely. Speaking of distribution, this is a little distributor cup and this is what I use to catch my beans as they are grinding and coming out of the hopper. This guy's really handy because I can make quite a bit of a mess so this allows me to not have a mess, especially because I am a beginner in the coffee world. Speaking of, I definitely recommend getting a scale for this guy. If you guys have ever made espresso, you have to be really precise and just really detailed with whenever you're making coffee. I will link down below some of my favorite coffee videos. This is a tamp and a level device. I purchased this from Crema as well. You're able to level out your coffee as well as the other side is a tamping tamping device. It's um, You use the palm of your hand to really pressure down the espresso so you can have a nice even extraction. And then the last thing I love doing to really elevate my coffee bar area is having my beans on display. I purchased my coffee beans from a local local place here where I live, but um, I think it's a really nice elevation. It's really important to have your coffee beans presented in an airtight case though, just so they don't dry out. And then my last, or not my last, but my second to last final thing are these to-go cups that I purchased from Marshalls. I love these guys. It's such a fun treat to go into Marshalls, Home Goods, TJ Maxx to see what fun types of to-go cups that they are selling that day. I love buying these for the holidays because I think they're so fun. And then when the holidays aren't around, I just use my reusable ones. But I love those guys. And then anytime I'm out shopping for the holidays, I try to find a cute, festive espresso cup. So for Christmas, I found this really fun winking Santa one. And then for Valentine's Day, I found this, found this cute one with a nice heart-shaped saucer. But yeah, let's go ahead and make some coffee. Okay, you guys, first thing that we do, obviously, is turn our machine on. I love this machine so much. Again, if you guys are thinking about purchasing an espresso machine, doesn't matter what brand, I definitely encourage it, especially if you are a coffee lover. Lots of brands have a lot of really nice machines out there. So do your research, see what works best for you and your family, but I definitely recommend it if you guys are in the market to buy one. But with espresso comes math. So just like my friend Arnisha, she's super afraid of math, but don't be afraid of it. it is it, it's a lot easier once you get the hang of it so espresso you like to have it in a one to two ratio so here I'm measuring about 18 grams of espresso with my scale and then I'm going to put it back into my hopper which is where you put the beans before they get ground and then you want to you want again a one to two ratio so 18 grams then to 36 grams when you are actually extracting the espresso so there I am, I have to go fill that, uh, fill that guy up with some beans, I have to go purchase them. But you go ahead, put your beans inside of the hopper, which is where they get, um, get, get all ground up, put the lid on, and then you press the button, and it will grind it for you. I don't grind my beans directly inside of my portafilter, I actually use my distribution cup so it creates, well, it doesn't create a mess, because I, I am definitely uh, messy when it comes to my coffee making skills. So beans are now grinding we'll wait for them to finish they take probably about 10 seconds but it is very very loud so now that the beans are finished grinding we're gonna go ahead put them inside of our portafilter and get started on that process
All right, you guys, let's go ahead and put our ground up coffee beans into our porta filter so we can create our puck. The puck is what it's called when it's completely tamped and ready to go. It kind of kind of resembles a hockey puck, um, you'll see towards the end. But what I'm doing now is taking my WDT tool and really just sifting out any large clumps. I start from the bottom, give a few swirls, and then I start, or then I go to the middle, and then I go to the top. With this tool, I have noticed an immense difference um, with my espresso extraction to really, um, to really bring out that creaminess, just because you can have some pocketing occur or just or just not an even kind of pressure with the water once it comes out of the machine so i think this little step is so minuscule but definitely important in, in the process so i give it a little few taps and then i take out my tamping device my tamp device is from crema and it has a level on the other side as well so i like to use the level level out the top of my coffee beans and then use the other side to tamp Tamping is important when it comes to uh, espresso and I will link down any of all the professional coffee videos that I have watched um, to get to where I am today. I will link those guys down below for a more in-depth um, detailed description on how to create um, your espresso puck. But this is what mine looks like. It has a little bit of espresso on the side that I'll wipe off here in a minute. But this is what mine looks like and it is ready to go within the espresso machine to get extracted. Now before I actually put my portafilter with my puck ready to go inside of my espresso machine, I actually like to steam and froth my milk first. I don't know, but I read a bunch of barista comments um, on other videos suggesting that I steam and froth my milk first before extract extracting my espresso so I've been doing that ever since then and it's been working well for me but I don't know if there actually is some scientific evidence behind either extracting your espresso first or um, or steaming your milk but that's what we're gonna go ahead and do and I just turned my steamer on and we are ready to go <laughs> espresso is extracted and our milk is steamed and frothed, let's go ahead and put everything together. First, I'm taking my Tirani caramel sauce to line the outer edges of my cup. This cup I just purchased in a set from Marshalls. I really like the clear look. Um, it's double-sided or double-walled so you can really see what's going on. So after I put some caramel around the sides, I put extra caramel syrup in just to, just to really amp up some flavor. <laughs> so. After that, after I get my flavors all in check, I'm going to go ahead and pour in my espresso. Very yummy, very nice, and sometimes I'll take a spoon and actually make sure that that's all evenly distributed within the cup. But for now, I'm going to pour in my nice steamed milk, starting in the center and then circling my way up to the top. And then once we get to the top, this, the frothed milk should be coming out here soon. There it goes. So, so nice, so lovely. That's my favorite part of the coffee. It's really, it's really just such a treat. So this is the part where you can definitely get creative. Today I decided to do some caramel drizzle just to stick with the caramel theme, but I love doing whipped cream, sprinkles, any sort of candy just to really bring this coffee to life. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me just showing you my coffee bar and how I make a coffee. I would be more than happy to make some more videos for you guys because these are just, just so fun to make.
Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video and making some lovely cozy coffee with me. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your week and have a safe weekend, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.